one of the things we're talking about is that um, I, I had kind of a really controlled uh, static setup, and then I ended up painting the figures in a very individualized way, and that's kind of leaving it like their gestures need to match the amount of specificity that I'm getting in the figures in the clothing for the next pieces. That was Did you physically put the people together somewhere? real space or? Uh, I did and then I ended up taking a lot of extra photos of people kind of individually and piecing them back in. Um. Okay. I like it for the simple reason that they are in kind of conversation or some kind of grouping. Um, the lighting that hits them um, I think could be more filled with shadow or something. Like, you know, if you know the light is coming this way, and she's more brilliant than this guy, and he really is back in there. Mm -hmm. She's back in there. But, you know, I think if if the light would move more, more in a similar way, with shadows between them, I think that relationship would be more uh, tough stunning. Um, I like the way this guy's elbow is done, his shirt is done, the pants, the way that builds up. I mean, this woman's pants too, and then uh, the guy's leg in the back, and that's next to that edge, the sandal, the feet, the multiple eye levels are all good. Mm -hmm. Careful. Um, the thing I don't like is like uh, this kind of business, or this looks clumsy and uh, you know I mean this variation of this color next to her color you know, is quite beautiful and it reminds me of Booger. Booger worked a lot in um, skylight and would do that and maybe work in the afternoon skylight and very short but with Booger, even though they're not my favorite paintings you know he does make five people look like they're in the same space which is a big Triumph. And I think this is a beautiful thing to try and continue. You know, people in Congress, social Congress, and how the colors work. Um, not finished though. No. Okay. I mean, you really like and you love the paint, if you can see the elegance, the poetry, that touch. It's good. And I think this guy's legs, too, the way it holds the light, is beautiful. Very seductive. The little stuff on the ground is very also nice. The toes, you know. Um, it's, it's lovingly done, you know, very affectionate. Um, you know, he's not as affectionate. Uh, this is kind of rough and ready. Uh, this is very more uh, delicacy. It's lovely. It reminds me of a little Frangelico. Frangelico is so kind of... Has anybody been to the San Marco in the drawings you've been there? When did you see it? I saw it two years ago. Yeah, me too. Me too, for the first time. And what did you most like? That was just a magical place. You walked into the little... Yeah, office. each each monks, there's like monk cells and each one has its own painting in it. Um, and, they're, and I like those kind of images that are just really, like the palette is really muted and they're just like simple, simple images of figures. What's beautiful is, um, I was with a, one of my grad students, a woman from Bulgaria, and she'd never been to Florence. I, I had to troubleshoot some. We had a teaching program there. But, so, there's two women guards who are like talking in Italian. And I say to them in Italian, listen, I traveled thousands of miles to see these rooms. Could you please be quiet? <laughs> <laughs> and um, then you walk in these little, you don't walk in kind of like hearings. And uh, each monk has, for the rest of their lives, to wake up and look at a picture it's like, a, it's like a gift. Only one person can view this picture for the rest of their lives. And that's a great, great uh, 
dimension of privilege. And he was amazing. Um, so I think you have that kind of affection uh, thing going on too. And um, I, I like it. I, I, look, I mean, I don't like that, that little head. I think, uh, man, the kettle is good. I mean, um, when I was a kid in New York, they had the Greenwich Village Art Show, which they stopped years ago. But they had half the show was like kettles and bottles and little Chinese dolls. And, you know, give me a break. You know, it's got to be more interesting than that art, you know. And uh, so I, I would. Uh, there's a wonderful little picture by Raphael Sawyer, maybe his best painting ever, and it's on um, the cover of a book that came out of him on him years ago, called Leaving Lincoln. Center or Lincoln Square. And these people are like looking like they're mourning, but they're moving as a group together or apart. And it's a good picture. And I think that gesture of the group, you know, leaving or coming together, it could be a great, great uh, subject matter. And I'm really very impressed by the uh, ambition of that painting. If you get rid of the trees, they always look like a, a monument to Giorgio Morandi's bottles. I, I think this is, uh, you know, if you look at the Bulgaros, there is that kind of air. I mean, it's a very kind of thick air. Mm -hmm. It's like the sky is like over them. You know, it's kind of heavy and uh, loaded. And I think her staccato paintbrush helps that too. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very youthful picture because she's interested in her friends and people here, you know, and how they gesture. And I think uh, that yellow, if it wasn't for that yellow, the picture would be in Italian sporca, uh, dirty, you know. That yellow makes the picture live, a little more yellow of that girl there. And I think the other thing I would say about how to compose with color is um, maybe you really should look at uh, a lot of paintings just for how costume becomes a color relationship. Um, I mean, the jeans, it's wonderful. I mean, everybody wears jeans, I guess. But the shirts become a dialogue. And the other thing that is interesting is, um, you know, why in the late Renaissance, like guys like Pontormo and Bronzino, they're getting to this really vivid purple of other colors, and why they like that. You know, for me, I, I don't dig it. I don't like it. But um, I could see why they had to explode in color uh, to make their forms seem more, say, aggressive and meaningful to them. You know, they wanted that. And then that color fades away, and they get into the Baroque and Caravaggio, and it's all kind of dark and dismal, not much color. But, um, I, I'm trying to think of who paints people as a group, like with clothes. Hmm. Anyway, but keep going. We know we know that Tintoretto had to make his compositions, and some of the early Tintoretto were just magnificent. The um, guy coming down finding the body of that saint, that guy coming back this way. You know, all of these things were done in the studio with little bits of um, either plaster or wax figures on strings, and they were lit by little torches and little reflective me metallic things. And then they would make little drawings, sometimes grisaille, to see all that composition. But Tintoretto is a good guy for uh, costume, how he makes costume work. Giotto is wonderful for how the limited palette makes the people work. And again, we, we have museums, and the museum, the word museum actually means uh, a place of miracles. And if you can make a picture so great that one could call it a miracle, and a lot are, you know, that color problem has to be learned. The thing that's wonderful about this painting is the atmosphere, that sense of uh, sparkling tonality back and forth. Um, but I, I don't agree with um, a lot of these people that you can teach somebody how to do something. 
and then it becomes a brand or a predictable. And I think the reason we're here is to show our time and to show how we make an individual a contribution rather than a joint contribution or something. I, I, I don't think artists are joiners. I, I think those ateliers are like, okay, so you can teach me how to draw like somebody who died 300 years ago. So what? I want to draw the way I want to draw. Um, so I, I look forward to seeing more work. Most of, uh, the, first of all, I, I like there. It is simply I like there. You know, when I step into the Casca, the, the huge, you know, space, it's very unusual for me. And then especially it was the, like a market. It is just a, a, a part of, you know, routine life. It is very interesting scenery for me. And then really, you know, made me, uh, it, it made me feel paint anyway. I was very wondering and curious, if I paint here, how can I show it? And then, and then that, you know, these structures of you know, inside of Costco is also very telling a lot of things about the society. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so I've been looking at uh, the market, you know, for a long time, but that was telling about our generation, you know, really practical, and then very need to be economy. But in that space, still, you know, we need to be, we need to be, uh, how can I say, human, you know, like a flower. We need to be a nature of, oh, I want to be human, you know, I want to be beautiful, even if in this, you know, kind of a dreary landscape. And very busy, very strict, and very formal, but I, I don't want to be like that way. I think so. And then, still, you know, very interesting to paint. It's interesting. It's, it's, yeah, I've been painted, you know, many beautiful places, you know, people's, mostly very beautiful, just the beautiful. But that, that scene, um, right, I still find uh, something beauty from there. And then I want to find that. How can I? I want to find a way. How can I change it, that scenery to my style? I have a question about this. Yeah. The, the stripe of the red. Like. That's um, kind of how can I say artificial intention from the society. You know, sometimes the politics or you know the politics or economy they have a control. They control the whole society, right? So I use uh, the flower as my metaphor, you know. That flower part is, a part, you know, of the world of area, oh, no, 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 our area in the, in the, top, in the world, you know. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I, I want to make, I want to impose something on this, uh -huh. which is, I mean, this is imposed anyway. You know, nature, but nature also as a package, yeah. links to a package and all that. Um, or, you know, the beauty captured as objects to be bought and used next to food and all that, you know, uh -huh. I get that. Um, but I, I really think that, you know, the idea of a tomb-like darkness of Costco, uh -huh. you know, it, in the darkness, yeah. it, as a statement of um, packaging and, like, they're like things in prison. I think if you would have another painting next to it, uh -huh. of something totally different, like where nature is not packaged, okay. uh, and put them together, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. the dialogue of two things yeah. can be more interesting, mm -hmm. because I think there's a limit to how often you can put flowers yeah. at Costco. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that was a very interesting scene. You know, I thought yeah. Costco is a totally very industrial scene, yeah. but when I see the, the flowers in that very, you know, uh, formatted uh, place. But that was a little shocking and then still very feel weird and then I feel <coughs> look like me. I, I feel like, oh, it's kind of me, like me, you know. Still we want to be beautiful, but 
we are never been free yes. in the society. Yes. Always we need to be, you know, follow the, the policy of the society, right? And then, mm. even if we can see the nature, the, my generation, you know, I mean, I, I've lived in um, very crowded cities. I've never no, been in from Seoul, 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 Korea, South Korea. Korea. Yeah, it's very, very, very in a crowded city. Yes. It's like a, you know, yeah, of course the size is small. It's almost the same as in New York. Very, very similar. Very busy and no, you know, nature. So, for me, it's nature is, uh, uh, for me, it's kind of, how can I say, um, it's not really na natural for me, you know. So, so, always if I saw the flowers or the nature, for me, it's kind of, can I say, far feeling yes. for me. Yeah. And then the, the color of red and yellow is, uh, represents me kind of, you know, the politics in the art area, you know. So if the artist, artist in uh, the MoMA or you know Metropolitan, they they look more beautiful. But if the the, the painting or the their artwork is in just you know un, unknown gallery or even if it's great art piece, it's not you know sometimes they are just you know. Just because they've never been exposure in good place, yes. yeah. So maybe it's a very complicated feeling. So sometimes because of that position, you know, we feel I'm not happy. Just because of uh, some some personal lucky, we can be happy. I think the flowers is can be us or you know. So it depends on how we are lucky or how we are in certain, you know, quality. Please. I was very intrigued by um, the kind of industrial darkness, you know. And I, was, I was curious about this flower business and how they relate. I, I think there's something, to me at least, a little bit artificial over the real flowers. I mean, yeah. this glaze thing. Oh, you know, It's a little bit like, um, you use the word trick. I think, uh, you know, I think instead of having that band of glaze or something, um, if you would actually, you know, set up, uh, you know, artificial lights on flowers. I was just reading something about um, the color blue in the New York Times <coughs> science section. And they said, if you want to lose weight, put in a blue light bulb in your refrigerator. It makes everything look disgusting. <laughs> and I think if you wanted these flowers to look more disgusting, you could put blue light bulbs on flowers. And then you wouldn't have to have what looks like a very, um, you know, a strained part of the picture. I mean, it's, it's strained, you know. But I think if you use artificial lighting on things like a green light on a red flower, it would look ridiculously hideous. And I think if you want hideous next to real light on flowers, that, that might be a dialogue. See, I think I pick up from you the politics of um, people are consumers and they're prisoners of consummation of this consumer society, which is very true. I mean, who wants to have a life of television commercials that make us feel ridiculous and silly? But I really think that if you took your natural light from Costco and put in some artificial lighting on real flowers or something beautiful like uh, some sculptures, you would see that that could be a way to find uh, an attitude about you know, something not pleasant, something that is sour or messed up, not natural. That's all I want to say. I think she, she, you've got something going on. But they could be together, or you can make another picture that argues for the natural light compared to the uh, light of uh, industrial uh, Costco. And, and you definitely can make painting. You know, definitely are making some interesting painting with these colors and the power of that uh, object, you know, with the stuff in the back. But I, I, I feel this picture is really curious because you can have, this is like a still life, uh, uh, objects in a movable 
table. You know? And um, again, if this was next to another painting, which was about exterior, where things were natural, that could be a dialogue. The, the guy she should look at is um, a painter called Mark Tansy, T-A-N-S-E-Y. Okay. And Mark, who's a friend, uh, does a lot of stuff which is about what you're doing too. Mm. Mark Tansy. Okay, Mark Tansy. Tansy. Okay. So I, I, this part, this painting is a part of my series, and like you, I think, uh, yeah, I, I can get what you're saying. This is a part of my series. Uh, the flowers it represents a type of artist because I'm studying, you know, art, and, and, and I want to be an artist, so I have a lot of big interest in artwork and artists. The flowers represent artists in my painting, and then after this painting, yeah, it's kind of I, I painted a lot different artists. I have, you know, I have big interest in, in artists too. Because I really, you know, admire that word. I have been curious in that word. What, what makes artwork? Mm -hmm. So I paint art artists uh, in, with this series. Yes. So it can be story, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. But so. I would love to see you get out of Costco. Okay. And then really uh, celebrate lighting or beauty of things. Okay. You know, because right now. I feel like this is kind of purgatory. It's like a, a place that is like hard to bear. And maybe the contrast is something beautiful and, and inspiring.